Now, I know you've all heard of stuffed peppers and loaded mashed potatoes, but have you ever thought of combining both of them together and loading them in a poblano pepper, cheese, sour cream, and some green chilies and bacon, all smoked to perfection? Hey, thank y'all for stopping by under the barn, and I know you've seen them, you've heard them, people always served them stuffed peppers. You know, bell peppers, all kinds of peppers, but have you ever stuffed a poblano pepper? Now, I want you to really look at a poblano. They are made for stuffing, and I'll tell you this for sure right now. You ever heard of that dried ancho chili that I use? That is one of these that has been really dried, and they shrink up really big really big. They shrink up really small and get all wrinkled up. There's so much flavor in here uh, in a fresh poblano as well, but you can't just go ahead and just eat this like it is. There's too much of a waxy, hard peeling on there, and we're going to we're going to show you how to peel these peppers in a minute. Because when you're just talking about smoking a jalapeno or maybe an Anaheim, it's totally different. Uh, a jalapeno, you're going to get that instant little bite of heat. But I've never really had a hot poblano pepper, and it's going to bring out a little chocolateness and a little bit of smokiness. And when you do smoke them, you even get more of that when you blister these peppers. So we're not baking them in an oven. This is going to go in the smoker, so we're going to get even more smoky flavor out of it. You know, a lot of people, when they try to roast a chili, they maybe do it over a burner on the stove or in the skillet even. But why would you do that when you could have one of these and you could roast things even faster? Now, folks, you don't have to blister these with a torch, but it's so much faster. You, you see how them little bubbles just begin to appear and pop up as them blisters make and you'll see that skin go from really sort of a, a, a lighter green to then you get sort of a more caramelized brown looking flavor and then you can just see that crust form that's sort of blackened there. But you've seen me do this on so many videos before to where we take a little bit of water, put in a plastic sack, put them chilies in there, tie it up. The steam off that is gonna help that skin loosen to where they'll peel so easy. I'd say five to 10 minutes most of the time and you're good to go. Just come to notice here, I'm going to go ahead and just do this for the bloopers, but how many people film in their house shoes? Oh, stop. <laughs> I mean, is this casual Tuesday? <laughs> <laughs> While them peppers is sitting over there just steaming in that sack, let's go ahead and put these potatoes together. Now, I need you to get like five to six cups of mashed potatoes. And we've got a mashed potato video that is probably so, so easy, so good. After you boil them potatoes and you got them soft like you want them and you drain the water of them, turn that burner down to what I would call low and set that pan back over there to get any of that excess steam and water off the bottom of that because you want them really dry before you go to mixing everything else with them. Now, we put a little heavy cream with these, got them seasoned up just a little, but folks, this is what's going in the poblano. First, your favorite, my favorite dessert. Hatch green chilies. Now, if these will drain a little, we need to sort of drain them because we don't need any more excess liquid in there than what we got. So one four ounce can. Now, I like to use about a half a cup of sour cream. And we're gonna call it about that much. And while we're there, let's just go ahead and season and then we'll season again to our suiting here in a minute. What goes best, Chen, on mashed potatoes and french fries, popcorn, and any other condiment that you might want to sprinkle something on? Our original seasoning. That's what it is. So give it a little sprinkling, and I want you to look here, folks. Me and the big. We went ahead and fried up bacon. Don't be telling me. I don't want to know if some of them you're thinking, well, this new year's come along, and I'm trying to watch my weight. I'm going to put some of that what you call it in there. Don't even say the word turkey. turkey bacon. Don't even say it, Shan, because it's not it's what not we. Bad. Oh, I don't think that you could disguise it in this dish. So, in to the taters it goes. Big says, "I hope some fell off in the ground. I will take care of it." But I have learned from prior engagements: save one piece back for when you're tasting to feed the puppies. So we'll put it right there. Don't let me forget it, Big. Cheddar cheese. Got to have some of it. You do. So let's just go to mixing. 
We'll give this a taste here in a minute to make sure we got it seasoned like we want it. Tad more seasoning. Folks, that's ready to eat right there. If you get to thinking to yourself, I can't wait no longer, just go ahead and dig in. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna care, that's all right. So, let's set this here. Let's go back over here and get these peppers and see if things are happening. So you can see the steam and the condensation that's come in that sack there. And that's what we're after because that's gonna help them. Now, I like to just take this sack right off the bat and just give them peppers a rubbing because we're gonna get some of that off there already. And I think you'll be amazed when it comes out of the sack here in just a second. Now, I wanna caution you, don't be too rough on these. These happen to be just right because we gotta have a slit in here to where we can. And a lot of times I have done them this way to where you just go ahead and take this end out of it and stuff the potatoes. But this way you can get that split down here right to the edge. Come on down here just a little to where you can see in here. Look what's in there. There is some stem and some seeds. Well, just reach right in there. See, I found it easier to cap them to cut the top off and then that way you can get all the seeds out easily. And you ain't gotta get all them seeds out there because I really think they just add some more flavor to it. So I'm gonna leave some of the seeds in there. Let me just go ahead and see, and to be gently on this one, if Shan will see, that's better than any Gillette or Schick razor ever got to in its life. You've seen they blistered and peeled out. And I, I think Shan showed you, but you know, all that stem cap and uh, them seeds is right there around the base of that. And, I don't really mess with them that much, unless I'm gonna go ahead and do it Shan's way where you just pull the core out of it and stuff them that away. But I like to just leave them like this, and then you can just, any way you wanna start, it don't make me any difference, just to everybody has to have some in there. Make sure that every crack and crevice is stuffed full of this goodness. That, folks, just increased its weight by 12 pounds. So we're just gonna lay him right there, going with the rest of it, then I'll see y'all over here at the Roughneck Smoker. Well, folks, today we be using what? Our Roughneck Smoker. We've teamed up with the good folks at Hasty Bake, and man, this thing will cook, and you can regulate some temperature oh so easy by just adjusting them vents. It is my go-to smoker because what? It clamps down airtight to where we get a quicker cooking time, but ooh, we have a moisture in there too that is really gonna help. So let me go ahead and get these out. We got it preheated to 275 degrees. And you just arrange them on there anywhere you want. Be gingerly careful. There's a little sizzle. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but I like a little sizzle. This is nearly a full meal deal right here. Look here at this little, look at this. Did you see that right there? That, that was just hanging on there just for, uh-oh, somebody's tailgate was nearly in the way. Let's go ahead and get that clamp down tight. That's just right. Alder wood. Anytime that I'm using uh, an alder wood, there's usually something in here that's it is a fish or a vegetable. It's a really mellow smoke that I like to use. Uh, so if you haven't tried it with vegetables as well, uh, get you some alder wood. There'll be a link down there below to where you can find out. We get it from Amazon. So we're using Fogo hardwood lump charcoal to start. Clamp it down airtight too because there's a seal all the way around that. And when you close that, the only airflow that we're getting is right here and one vent in the back. Now to regulate this heat, we can shut this one down or open it up to get that flow to where it's going back here. But the vent in the back is right at the back. That smoke will go to filtering through there on them peppers and we'll think, oh my gosh, stuffed peppers are oh so delicioso. 
Now, if you're really in a bind, you could do this in the house in the oven. I'd say just preheat that oven to about 325 degrees because remember, the mashed potatoes are cooked, the bacon is cooked. So we're warming everything throughout, but we still got to soften that pepper some more to get all that flavor to blend in there. But the smokiness that this adds to it, that it just keeps rolling around there, is oh so good. We're going to probably let this go 20 to 25 minutes at about 275, and then we'll crank that heat up right there at the last and probably go another another 15 to 20 at about 300, pretty sight it is folks they was oh so easy they went about probably 35 minutes at 275 and then i cranked that heat up to about 325 and let them go a little bit longer and get all that good color that cheese melts all in there it is so easy to do uh i'm gonna cut this end right here shan and and i got a feeling that that's gonna be so hot gonna be like pizza that stick to the roof of your mouth so if y'all see me run off, you'll know why. Mm. Oh my gosh. Mm -mm. I'm talking about, uh -oh. that might be some of the best food I ever eat in my life. Folks, we made these for a lot of our events and these were always a crowd pleaser. I never got to eat one of them, but I guarantee you I'm gonna eat one of these. The flavor you get from the smoke, really that alder wood is so mellow, but the cheese melted in there with the sour cream, the green chilies, and then you get just a little crunch of that poblano, and that's all that you need. Ooh, it is oh so tasty. Where's your uh, leftover bacon? So, <laughs> Lou, you and Schnauzer are the only ones present. So, there you go, Lulu. Just in case somebody shows up, Mage, and you know how to bite earlier, we're going to do that right there. Folks, we thank y'all so much for tuning in. We appreciate it. Be sure and give us one of them likes on the channel because it sure does help our channel grow. And share the videos with all your friends and neighbors and the food because Mr. Rogers said we need to be all good neighbors. It is with great pleasure and honor and pride that I salute all our servicemen and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag of flying over camp. So many of y'all have reached out to us and tell us what a difference that we make. Y'all make the difference in our lives. Me and Shan, thank you so much. Rest of you, come on in here. Hurry, hurry, hurry. I'm gonna give you a big old hug. God bless you each and every one and I'll see you down the stump Poblano Trail. While we're waiting on them peppers to blister and that is wrong. Big, are you ready? Big says, I am ready. What do you think, buddy? Well, while them pester, pesters. <laughs> pesters. <laughs> Woo! Pickled pesters.